Saviour. Good evening, Assalamu Alaikum, and welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host, Ahmed Nawaz. Boy, does it feel great to be back on the show once again. Of course, a weekend in between. I had to spend a lot of time with family. Good enough for all of us, considering what the situation is like. But we're back at work. We are essential workers, me and the entire team here at PTV World and PTV in general. And we're there to bring you the very fresh and latest updates from around the world. Today is particularly special because we're celebrating the International Day of Sport for Development and Peace. It's the 6th of April. Sports have been shaping the world and society, and they're a key role in development of the youth, including uh, projects like Women Empowerment, and it's a great harbinger of peace as well. Uh, if we just go into the details, on 23rd of August 2013, the United Nations General Assembly in a resolution which was 67 slash 296, decided to proclaim on 6th of April as the International Day for Sports and Development and Peace. The UN with this commemoration invited states and the UN system in particular, the United States Office on Sport for Development and Peace, relevant international organizations and international, regional and national sports organizations, civil society, including non-governmental organizations and the private sector and all relevant stakeholders to cooperate, observe and raise awareness of the International Day of Sport for Development and Peace. That's what we're going, to, we're going to be talking about tonight here live at PTV World. And I think it's a great topic celebrating this day as well, especially in these testing times of the COVID-19 outbreak throughout the world as well, because this is what actually brings us closer. And sports, we've always talked about it, eliminating boundaries and bringing people closer as well. I'm going to be talking about all of this in studios. I have been joined by our guest for tonight's show. And it's great to have him on the show as well. He's the new and improved with a new hairdo. He's none other than the very legendary sports expert that we have. He's going to talk about all of these sports, none other than Mr. Ali Mehdi. Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Wa alaikum salam, Ahmed. Good to be back. Good to be back. It's fantastic good to be good new here for you as well, huh? Yeah, I thought it would be my best way to uh, experience uh, social distancing. Definitely. I'm going to move on to a very special guest that I've been joined with on uh, tonight's show. And it's great to have her because the amount of work she and her organization have been doing for a promotion of sports, for women empowerment. You know, the organization is called Fem Games and the work they're doing with the girls around Pakistan and government institutions and other ranks as well is completely phenomenal. She's none other than the Wonder Woman that she is and a superstar now because of all the work that she's doing. CEO of Fem Games, none other than Miss Iba Qureshi. Assalamu Iba, how are you? Assalamu how are you? Assalamu Right, Iba, I must ask you, International Day for Sport, for Peace and Development, of course, being celebrated through the UN, uh, being observed. And you're somebody who's related to this very much because the line of work you're doing, I think that does say a lot about this day. Well, we are trying to do our best. We are trying to do what we can uh, for sport, especially for girls in sport, because I believe that uh, uh, there is a huge narrative to be played. Um, we want girls to be as um, healthy and fit and active as uh, the opposite gender. I think there should be lots of opportunities, and I think, you know, sport unifies us, so um, it's one of the best tools. Right, but do tell our viewers once again about Fem Games. You know, I was lucky enough to have you on the show last time you were here in Pakistan as well. Uh, tell us about where this entire thought came from, what you wanted to do, and how successful do you think you have been in order to achieve that goal that you had for Fem Games? So, Emma, as you know, uh, I've been a huge advocate for women in sport for a, a while now. I have three children and two of them are daughters who are um, currently playing professional uh, sport. They're either playing cricket or they're playing tennis, etc. But I've, uh, you know, I've seen a, a, a firm development in my girls. I feel that the opportunities that they have been given, because we are in a country where sport has given a, a, a lot of importance, um, they have developed in a personality which I don't think I would have got through a traditional academic education. 
Um, I myself have played a lot of sport at school, and I believe that winning trophies and getting achievements, it, it's just, a, you know, it, it gives you so much self-satisfaction, and it's so rewarding. So what we did was, uh, when I did a bit of charity work in Pakistan and I went to a few schools, I saw that uh, we didn't have enough opportunities for girls um, during PE lessons, for example. Um, the girls were just not interested, or it was one of those lessons that was just not given enough importance to. And I felt that we have such talented and such amazing right. girls at schools, which just, you know, we're not able to refine them to the final product that we could potentially through sport. So we took inspiration from UK mm. sports curriculum. We took inspiration from the ICC curriculum, for example, and other memos with my husband, who's the head developer of the program. Um, we sat down and we made sure that we came up right. with Eba, a curriculum. That there. Would... We're just going to go towards a very, very short break, and we're going to continue this discussion afterwards about this entire scenario where sports plays a cru crucial role and a key element that is in their society for development and peace as well. Stay tuned. I knew it because of the time. Welcome back to Sports Extra. We're discussing the International Day of Sport for Development and Peace in conversation with the CEO of FEM Games, Eba Qureshi. Eba, before the break, you were telling us about uh, FEM Games as well. Now, sport for development and peace, one of the key factors in this has to be women empowerment, especially in Pakistan since the new government came into power. We've seen a lot of initiatives for women empowerment through sports especially as well. How do you see that prospect? I think it's a very welcoming process. I think that uh, we are very lucky to have a prime minister like Imran Khan Sahab, uh, who understands and who values, uh, you know, uh, the importance of women in, in all sectors of the country. Um, I feel that this is a time to really push the women empowerment agenda through, through whether it's healthcare, sports, you know, teaching, education, etc., and really give women the, uh, the, the the platform that they really deserve to be on. Um, you know, as we know, women are very multitasking and they're very good at it. Um, hence, we should, uh, you know, we, a country like Pakistan, uh, I think, should really excel with uh, with women in different areas, and especially for um, you know sport uh, and, and sport development through, you know, for for peace, for example, which which is the the, the current subject today. Um, you know, uh, sport has a great relationship with peace. Uh, it's a profound relationship that they have together. Um, I feel that um, we can really use sport to leverage a lot of uh, a lot of peace for development um, narratives that uh, that we see around the globe. Definitely, and in these testing times, of course, with the COVID-19 and isolation everywhere around the world, how do you see sports personalities and individuals like you who are doing a lot for society? playing their part in this as well. And on a lighter side, I know you've got a fantastic golf course at home as well. So that does mean that sports is playing its role. To be active, that is the whole idea. Um, health and fitness is priority, that, which is why we're talking about sport. Um, you know, sport doesn't just uh, bring leadership qualities and, and instill life skills in you, but it keeps you health and healthy and, and safe. Um, and in current dire conditions with COVID, and we're all, you know, we're all isolated, we're all at home. It's, uh, there's a great danger of uh, of women, or generally it's the public, sitting isolated at home and not being active, which is even worse, I guess, for us. So, um, you know, what we are trying to promote is the fact that there's a lot of activities that you can do at home and keep active. And I, I see a lot of the sports stars taking this, this initiative quite well. They're doing a lot of online classes. They're using their social media platforms to, to promote sport and activity at home and what you can do with kids. For example, my husband, like you said, you know, created a little mini golf course. We're doing the activities all day, every day, um, especially for children. You know, we have to look after mental health as well during this time. And if you remain active, your mental health will, you know, will obviously not suffer. You will, you will be, um, you know, you'll be, 
you'll be busy doing things that you generally like to do during the day, but outdoors, which you can bring indoors. Um, I think that activity and sport is very, very important for, for um, families right now at home. If you can walk in your, in your uh, you know, garden, do that. If you can walk inside the house, if you can do a little light exercise, it's really important that we uh, push for that. Well, definitely. Finally, Eva, I must ask you at the same time as well, uh, as you've mentioned so many things here, what is installed in the future for FEM Games and what are you hoping for in the near future? So, you know, inshallah, when we are out of this this, uh, this very, very strange time with COVID-19 around the world, um, we would like to, uh, you know, uh, keep pushing the agenda for bringing sport for girls in schools within their PE lessons. We would like to see PE lessons a lot more structured. We'd like to see a lot more competitive sport amongst women and girls in Pakistan. Uh, you know, things that are culturally accepted, obviously, um, but also just to push the agenda of keeping fit and learning life skills through sport. So that that is our agenda. We will keep pushing for it. We know that in this condition at the moment, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to bring in as much indoor activity as possible. But uh, inshallah, when the time is right, we will go back and push it for schools. We were in Lahore this year. We've been in Karachi and we're looking forward to going into Islamabad very soon, inshallah. Inshallah. But so, thank you so much for your time here at Sports Extra. More power to you, Fem Games, Azerbaijan, and your children, everybody there. And I certainly would like to say this, that me, the platform of Sports Extra and BTV World, are always there for Fem Games and such initiatives that you bring for the future of Pakistan. Having me, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Right, that was Iba Qureshi, CEO of Fem Games. Uh, I think she's pointed it out absolutely spot on in that constructive manner that we needed to understand the importance of sports playing a role for development and peace. If you talk about FEM Games, then, uh, you know, I wish I could go on and on about this initiative. Uh, unfortunately, time is a luxury I don't have, but this is something great. I think all of us need to be involved with FEM Games at whatever stage or whatever platform we can be, because I certainly think this is for our children and this is for the future of Pakistan. And I think, uh, you know, giving power to these young girls and giving them hope is certainly uh, something only a superhero can do, as I do call about that as well, and I think that's how it should be done. Ali Mary, uh, this day means more than it, what it actually transcends into, and that is, of course, as we mentioned, in, that in these dire times, in these testing times of COVID-19, we're seeing so many examples where sports is actually, uh, you know, connecting people at the same time. I think this is a great initiative which was started by the UN General Assembly back in 2014. And I don't think that it's been given as much importance as it has as it has been given today. And there's a reason for that. Everybody's in self-isolation mm -hmm. right now. Everybody's inside their homes too. They can go outside for physical activity. So it just shows that, you know, sports is actually a binding force between everybody. And everybody, even though they can't go outdoors, they can't actually uh, come together with each other, they can actually keep themselves fit inside. They can actually, uh, you know, look towards, you know, sports as, a, um, as an example as to how they can keep themselves physically fit, whether it should be indoors and hopefully in the future outdoors too. But I think it's a great initiative. And you see that all sporting leagues around the world. Should it be FIFA has endorsed it, many of the, the FIFA has endorsed it, many of the football uh, leagues around Europe have mm -hmm. actually endorsed it too. Cricket for that matter has also uh, come together for it. So I think it, this is a great initiative and it just shows that, you know, if the UN is accepting it, it actually, sports is actually a feel-good factor and it brings a lot of people together. And we've seen so many sports personalities making a difference, especially in these times. Uh, Roger Federer yeah. contributed about 1 million Swiss yeah. francs. Rafael Nadal contributed a lot. Uh, our boxer, Amir King Khan, also uh, gave his uh, part. His building was given to the National Health Services in the UK. Also, his academy in Pakistan, he said that's available for quarantine purposes as well. So, so many superstars or actually making a difference. I, the, the list just keeps on going on. You talk about uh, the ATP and WTA, they've actually contributed a lot too. You talk about Premier League, the English Premier League in the UK, the, they've actually taken a 30% uh, pay cut so that, you know, they have, um, uh, so that 30% that can actually be gone into the end in national health services in, in, in England, for, for example. You talk about the tennis superstars, uh, Roger Federer, uh, Novak Djokovic, and they've also contributed too. Then you have local players also, you know, doing their best to contribute to society. So it just shows that sports, uh, you know, is really contributing to society in these very, very dire and strange times. Dire and strange times, definitely. Uh, Ali Mehdi, I'd like you to briefly 
just quickly go over some of the initiatives that you are seeing also in terms of organizations. You just mentioned football. Borussia Dortmund contributed yeah. their part as well. A lot of people are doing that right now. Yeah, a lot of them is actually doing that. You talk about uh, the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, uh, is actually has contributed very heavily toward that. They're not having the Olympic Games, unfortunately, this year. But you have many uh, this Olympic uh, superstars who are actually con contributing to the cause too. You talk about uh, this. Uh, you talk about cricket, for example. You know, um, a lot of them have actually in the UK. Uh, ben Stokes, uh, Roy, Joe Root, all of them have actually contributed a bit of their salaries to uh, toward this English Premier League, like I mentioned earlier. To um, this. Uh, this, uh, br uh, this in the German league, the Bundesliga, the, in Spain, for example, a lot of players have actually contributed part of their mm -hmm. salaries towards uh, the, you know, the relief, the fight against COVID-19. Right, and, and it just the list keeps on going on. Keeps on going on as well. Uh, I will just get another one of our very special guests for tonight's topic online with us as well. I've been very, very honoured to be joined with one of the most influential young leader in sports that we see she's definitely making a mark. She's a consultant on education in sports and Olympism. She's achieved a lot over the years and I think she's certainly making us proud and doing a lot for sports inside and outside Pakistan as well. None other than Ms. Ada Jafri. Assalamu alaikum, Ada. How are you? Assalamu alaikum, Ada. How are you? Ji, assalamu alaikum. How are you? I'm good. Great. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's an absolute honor. I'd like you to first of all comment on the International Day of sport for development and peace. You're somebody who's associated with this and have a better understanding for what it means around the world. Yeah, so basically Peace and Sport is an organization which is a non-profit entity and it uh, operates from Monaco. Uh, the headquarters are there in Monaco in Europe. And uh, over the past couple of years, uh, in a very short span of time, they have created a huge impact um, on the global uh, sports, uh, in the global sports movement, so that, you know, today you can see every athlete, be it from Pakistan or abroad, or from different continents, athletes, uh, people from the corporate world, um, and, you know, Olympians, the IOC president, everybody is talking about uh, the IDSDP, which is the International Day of Sport for Development and Peace. So it's a, a great global movement uh, for the promotion of and development of sports through peace. So the day basically enhances the importance of sport as a tool to promote development and peace in uh, around the globe. Definitely. You know, I must congratulate you and your team for the work that you've been doing inside Pakistan in order to promote this. But we do understand that we need to have a better awareness of this concept because Frankly speaking, we've got so much of sports happening in Pakistan, but it, when it comes to connecting it with development and peace, then the connection is there, but the awareness isn't there. Yeah, so you see, um, I still remember year 2019 April when I was invited by her channel to talk about peace and sport because last year was the one that picked up really well uh, here in Pakistan. So this um, notion of hashtag white card campaign and peace and sport campaign was not really known to people here in the country. And it's, I mean, the due credit goes to the efforts of Pakistan Olympic Association, an organization I wanted to be associated with on different ventures, that they started, you know, having uh, events on April 6th by collaborating with different universities. And last year, Sports Phone Punjab, uh, Punjab Olympic Association and the National Olympic Committee of Pakistan, they all uh, you know, pull their resources together, and we had a huge, uh, tremendous show at the opening um, of the uh, 72nd uh, Punjab game. game. And interestingly, uh, Pakistan was also nominated, uh, you know, as a country in the Peace and Sport uh, Award ceremony. So we were among the six nominees who had created an impact globally for promoting the ca campaign. So, I mean, uh, I feel really honored and proud and accomplished uh, of the fact that uh, we have been able to promote uh, this global campaign here in Pakistan really well. Now to the second part of your question, which is that a lot is happening, but again, you know, when you see, when you talk about coherence or when you talk about um, efforts that are really, you know, in partnerships, we do have a lack in that. 
And on that, I think it's it's majorly the lack of connectivity between the organizations, be it the government organizations or the private non-profit organizations. The one thing that is really needed in this, uh, you know, in these days and in these times for the promotion and development of sports is uh, collective efforts, collaborative efforts and partnerships. So more of private-public partnerships private partnerships, more of more involvement of the corporate world. So I think this is something which is really now needed because we have been discussing sports for quite a long and we have been discussing the progress of sports for quite a long. But what is now needed is to come up with MOUs, come up with agreements between, you know, um, the cross, uh, cross-sectoral uh, agreements maybe that can really resonate uh, and change, uh, you know, and bring a paradigm shift in the sports sector in Pakistan. Definitely. I think you pointed out brilliantly the synergy that is needed between the organizations and sport in general definitely is there as well. But I must ask you uh, your personal feelings once you were there in that awards ceremony as well representing Pakistan. And I'm sure it's a huge honor and you've, all, you've made us all proud as well. But what were your initial thoughts when you actually felt that connection that Pakistan is being highlighted on a global stage? Well, frankly speaking, I mean, um, so, you know, I before this campaign even, I have been, I represented Pakistan in one of the most prestigious academic degree, which is called MEMOS. It's a master's of uh, sports, management of sports organizations. And even when I was Pakistan. there, sorry? I said, which we don't have much in Pakistan. You're one of the few people's, uh, people I know that who has got those degrees as well. Yeah, so so I was the first Pakistani uh, who attended that degree, and now there's another boy who's enrolled on the same program. So he's the second. He's going to be the second Memorian. So so you see, it's when we are abroad, and particularly on these academic ventures and on ventures where we have to represent our country, it's it's indeed very difficult, and people give us very you know, challenging reactions because um, when they talk about Pakistan, at times we get to hear, oh, Pakistan, which is next to India. Oh, so, you know, uh, so still, you know, it's it's in the sports world, it's really, really not, uh, we are not highlighted in a very, very positive manner. So for peace and uh, sport, when I, I, initially, I started working with the Olympic Committee on this project, particularly for the past three years, so the first one was with the GCU, and then it was with BNU, and then uh, the last year was with the government of Punjab and Punjab Olympic Committee. So what we did was that we started tweeting all of our activities to the peace and sport uh, organization, and one response that we got was, and even so there were names of some countries, and then they say, even Pakistan is celebrating the peace day, which was, you know, I mean, in a sense, it was good. But then we also felt that, you know, the world still thinks on different lines when it comes to Pakistan. So being nominated for the award, I mean, was like a shock, particularly to the European world. And when I was there and I had, uh, you know, people from almost, I guess, 36 countries, uh, from India, from Israel, from Sri Lanka, from uh, Scandinavian countries, uh, from U.S., I believe, and many Olympic committees were also there. So it was a great feeling and, you know, I am really also grateful to the Olympic Committee for all of their support, uh, financial as well as moral, for sending me to really get the feel of, of that uh, forum and of that uh, platform where world leaders were, you know, presenting their ideas and pitching uh, their stories to people from the United Nations, from the Olympic Committee and from many other international federations. Definitely, that's true. Ada, thank you so much for your time here at Sports Extra. I think you make us all proud and we can frankly say that you are the real Pakistani that's going out there and earning a great game for Pakistan and also working for sports in Pakistan as well. Uh, thank you so much once again for having me uh, uh, here on this show. And uh, let's just all raise our white cards and celebrate the IDSCP 2020. Definitely, we would love to do that. Thank you so much, Mr. Dajafi. Well, Ali Mehdi, you heard two different uh, concepts now. One is where we see uh, Iba Qureshi and Fem Games doing a spectacular job in empowering young girls to PE. And let's face it, physical education has not been a uh, real forte of us growing up in schools in Pakistan as boys, but doing that for girls is certainly phenomenal. And then you've got 
Ada Jafri, who's uh, trying to you know, promote the idea of how sports can play a pivotal role in development and peace as well. Two different ideas, but certainly going in the right direction. Both of them are going in a great direction. First, I want to start off by Kuresh. I think she's doing a fantastic job of uh, promoting uh, PE, uh, physical education, and you know, um, and any sort of uh, physical activity amongst girls. I, I think whilst growing up, I didn't see so much of that, but the narrative is now changing. So I think she's doing a phenomenal job. And now in our society, see, you can see the difference of it. So hats off to her. I think. She She's doing a great job, and Ada Jaffrey too. I think she's doing a great job. You know, uh, you can see it on the grounds too. I mean, how much sports means to everybody, and how much you could see that. Uh, you know, and you think we've got to change the scenario? Now? I mean, I, I completely understand. I have a lot of respect for all the careers out there, but people need to realize now that sports and sports management is a professional career. You've got degrees around the world in this as well. I mean, look at sportsmen around the world. A.B. de Villiers playing hockey, rugby, golf, not just cricket, was something phenomenal. You've got great athletes like Ben Stokes for England, and you've got so many people in Pakistan who could actually be those next big personalities as well. All you need to do is have that awareness and understanding that this is a proper career. This is a proper career, career and proper mentoring and grooming. Look, do you know all these sports people, do you know they're playing different types of sports, but then after that, what happens once they've actually retired? I mean, the thing thing is that it's once your career is over, it, that doesn't mean that you're you know completely dysfunctional or you're not part of the game too. You are very much part of it. You have to give back to society too. But at the same time, it just shows that you know that with all these sports management consultancies, that there is a, a career out there, there is a future out there, and then all these sportsmen need to come together, give back to society, and you'll see that you know there's always a career in sports, and how these fledglings and all these kids are actually going to do very well. Do uh, very well indeed. And and uh, definitely we can hope that with so much talent in Pakistan in all sports, all we need is the right platform and definitely the synergy between the organizations to take this forward. Yeah, indeed. I think this is a, I think that all you need is that you need synergy amongst each other, the sportsmen, the sports management, you know, the authorities, the government also needs to, you know, give back to society. And I can see that there's a wave of change over here and that, you know, you can see that the concept is becoming stronger here. So I think it's going to take uh, one step at a time, but we are going definitely going in the right direction. And uh, it's about the right time that we highlight these initiatives as well. We've been playing our part of sports sector, but a lot of other people now need to take this up as well. And uh, this is the best thing about Sports Extra is that, you know, we always highlight, you know, you and the production team always highlight this factor, on, you know, on television and then every, or everybody else follows. But it's important that other media outlets and, you know, everybody in society actually highlights this so we can see a positive uh, impact uh, for society. Ali Madi, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for being an essential worker in these testing times and definitely taking out time for Sports Extra as well. We're going to leave it at that. I think once again the message is loud and clear that sports does stand for development and peace. All we need to do is have the right amount of synergy between the organizations and the right amount of awareness. I think the media now needs to initiate this concept that sports can be uh, utilized and promoted and should be promoted for development and peace, not just around the world, especially in Pakistan as well. Let your kids go out and have that career that they want through sports, but definitely after these testing times are over, remember to follow the guidelines given by the World Health Organization and, of course, the Ministry of National Health Services in Pakistan. Stay safe, stay in isolation and quarantine. We're essential workers. We've got to come out and work for you guys, but you can stay home and play your part for me and the entire team of Sports Extra. It's goodbye for now.